Mark Podcast Show presents Story Time Gone with the Ghost Murder by Design by Erin McCarthy. Chapter 1 The day I tried to kiss my best friend Ryan, he killed himself. Seriously, I confess my love affair after a decade of friendship. He scratched his head and said, Whoa, whoa didn't you see that coming? I left my house and ate a bullet. So six months later, when I stumbled into my kitchen, painted serene green to promote happy thoughts at 6am, I saw Ryan standing there. I, I, I did the only thing that seemed appropriate. I screamed at the top of my, of my black for, former smoker's lungs. I knew I was a dream, and the coffee was perking at the timer, just like it should be. I had a full bladder and a morning breath, all signs of reality, but that 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 was Ryan standing there, wave, wearing a navy blue t-shirt and jeans, looking very much alive and sporting a full grin. Yet Ryan was dead, 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 dead. Fat line DOA, pushing daisies in loving memory, inscribed headstone dead. I've been to his funeral, I cried enough tears to float an SUV down river. I just had suffered so many, so much guilt and anxiety. I was the edge of cracking, snapping into a dozen powdery pieces like walnut peanut brittle dropped on a hard board floor. Ryan winced, Jesus Bailey, turn it, turn it down. It's the crack of freaking dawn. Hearing him speak startled me so bad. I cut off my mid-scream, my jaw, what, for a second time, so I managed to stutter, Ryan, in the flesh, he said, holding his arms out. Then he laughed, or something like that, anyway. You're dead, I said, which wasn't the most brilliant thing I ever said, but I was feeling like I'd been clocked with a brick, my ears were ringing, and my chest still crushed, like it did whenever my mum's cat took a snooze on my breast. He leaned on the marble counter, crossed his feet, um, which was a shot in his favourite hiking boots, the ones his mother had insisted they bury you. No kidding, where have you been, Captain of the Obvious? Then he leaned a little closer to me, grinning on him, uh, closer to me, studying my face. Do you have the flow or something? You look like hell. Not like I know what hell looks like since I'm stuck in perjury. I'm no so freaking bored, I might actually be willing to take a chance on it. Anyway, you look wretched. Uh, I reached a tentative hand out, try, thinking to touch him, I guess. You can't touch me, Bailey. A smile wavered on his face. I'm a ghost, though. I don't really like the word. It's too dramatic for me. It, my hand froze in midair. He was a ghost? Ryan was a ghost? How incredibly bizarre, totally bizarre. Hot racing survival of hummingbirds. I reached for the phone. What are you doing? I'm calling 911 because I'm having a heart attack. I would off a minute, but on that, will you? He ran his hand through his short brown hair. I need to ask you some things. Like how long have I been since I, since I, bit it? You wouldn't let. They won't let me have a can of them perjury. I mean, what kind of rule is that? Why does it why does it matter? It's been six months, six long, horrible months picking up the phone. I cast it to my chest and stared at him in wonderment. <clears throat> I always thought ghosts would be transparent, whispery sort of things, moaning or grazing in the longing at the living. Ryan looked like he'd always said. He looked alive, healthy, exactly as if nothing had happened at all. Six months? Are you serious? Man, I thought it was, go- it was more like a month. Ryan glanced his watch. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Scary. He shook his hand. Are you dieting? I think you should stop. That ain't me, so let you look. Don't make you, don't welcome you with your red hair. You got, you look like an Irish orphan. You re- you've got smudgy black circles under your eyes too. That ain't mascara, babe. Why don't you fix yourself some bacon, some bacon, bacon, eggs and bacon for breakfast? <clears throat> Maybe I really was sleeping and my stomach was sending messages to eat protein. The guys were concerned, Ryan. Very sneaky. Got to watch that tricky little piece of anatomy. 
turn your back for a second and your stomach's coming completely in charge. I haven't been hungry. In fact, the thought of the scrambled eggs made me gag behind my hand. I picked up my sleep t-shirt and went for, went for the coffee pot. Some things can't be faced without caffeine and the ghost of my best friend was one of them. You got appointments today? Stop off at Bob Evans first and get loaded up. Nothing like a little bit of, bit of butter to put the colour back to your face. He sniffed the air. Man, I wish I could pick up your mug. I'm dying for a cup of coffee. That poetry, that's poetry, whom you. By the way, dying for a cup of coffee. Yeah, I was just cracking up. Mmm. I have to stage a house. At Everton at ten, but I'm free till then. I was planning to catch up on some social media. Clear by you mean. I was also planning to meet you, Lions West Park Ranch House. That his parents have finally put on the market, hiring my staging company. Put it where? Get it ready for a quick sale, but it seemed pre- pretty rude to bring that up. God, I don't know how much time I have to hang out with you, so drink your coffee, Nick. Plan your strategy for finding my killer. It's embarrassing to admit, but at this point I was completely lost. Hysterics are usually my forte, but I spent the last six months suffering. I mean, you're talking, sobbing yourself to sleep, therapy, guilt, hanging like a joker, round my throat, kind of a six months. And here he is, Mr. Bo, no big deal, like strolling into my kitchen was suspected, and nothing out of the ordinary. Killer? Did you say killer? What are you talking about, I said, in something that could only be defined as a shriek, given that it by with an opera singing pitch. You killed yourself, Ryan, six months ago, yesterday. You stuck your police issued gun into your mouth, pulled the trigger in your car, you sent a text and left it left a whole mess of people behind you. Hate what you not that you're not with it us anymore. You're selfish and shitty and it sucks. And I miss you. I just want to know that. I want you to know that. My hair gave out and I stopped to breathe. You think I'll kill myself? Ryan said straight up and stared at me. Holy shit, how do you think that? What kind of douchebag kills himself? Well, I've been wondering the same thing. I was murdered, Bailey. I'll come back so you can help me find out who the murderer is. Oh, I said. It's not easy to be witty in these circumstances. If I had been murdered, that changed everything. It altered the entire scope of my grief and shifted my guilt over to anger, my shots to horror. Can we have a can we have a do over? His eyebrow went up as I gulped half a cup of coffee, hot liquid slushing over the mug and to, and my red shirt. I blushed frankly at my nail wet chest. That's crazy. You actually bleeding crazy. I want to do it. I want to go back in time. Erase February seventeenth. I want. I want. I want you not dead. My words crashed a, a hole. The reason grows. Crap. I'm hyperventilating. Okay, take a big breath, babe. Come on now. I'm telling you to stick your head between my leg, your legs. You're standing up and wearing no pants. I may be dead, but I'm not in a coma. That's that's more than I need to see. Wait, a horrible humanity thought occurred to me. Do you remember coming over the day you died? And he he was trying to lay on and he and he and me trying to lay one on me him. His quick cotton movers that have allowed him to dodge it. The way he stuck his feet back in his snowy boots as he rap at wall speed muttered a few things on the floor. Should have passed for good boy or good God, I'm never sure which. Never, never, never one was desirable. If he remembered all that, then I wanted to die. No, that's the whole problem. All I remember is driving over your your house. Then it's blank until I pulled out to the park. At the park, lot at the park. I don't even know what made me go to the park. I don't even know.
I know there was someone talking, then nothing. I don't know what happened. He shook his head, but I don't know. I didn't kill myself, and I'm pissed. You would think that. I would. I would. What the hell? You know me better than that. I, I gasped in indignation. How was I at fault here? You sent a text to your mother. The department said you killed yourself. No question about it. Prints, powder burns, all the crime scene crap. They said it's clear that you did it. Going to see an old friend, me, his typical suicide of behaviour. You were transferred money, made a will and drove yourself to a peaceful though, private location. That, and that was meaningful to you? That part was meaningful to me? You needed a, needed a sign that read, Big, dumb, dead man stuck on his forehead. Jeez, you might tell me you might... You, t- you told me you lost your virginity there. Understanding dawned on his face. Oh, I'm with you now. But yeah, that's right. I told you that, didn't I? Cammy, something or other. Can't remember her last name. She had a great... His hands came up in front of him. And then he cleared his throat. Sense of humour. She was a fun guy, girl. But I've forgotten all about the park. Those were good times. I rubbed my eyes. His sensitivity is heartwarming. Then I remembered where my thoughts have been going. I would not know. A little slow on the uptake, but the dead rising at 6am tends to throw me off. So don't you remember coming over here that day? I said that already, Bailey. Come here with me. Keep it. Keep up with me. Ryan st- st- started to pace his hands in the pockets of his jeans. He had no memory of my little word of sanity. My pathetic little speech about how feelings I had on for him and more and more friendship, that kiss, ug, that attempted kiss. I had nightmares about the moment where my lips inflated into giant taco size, taco, such and perhaps attacking Ryan while he pointed his gun at me and told me to freeze. Man, I was glad he didn't remember that. Now it really, now that it really matters since he was dead, I thought that was never an instrument of power and mortification. None of this makes sense. No joke, give the dead guy a good gold star. I w- watched him as he did as he did another circuit back and forth in front of my French country covenant covenant commentary, marvelling what I could smell him. Sent the French grass grass clung to him with an underlying hint of sport to Roda. So it's fine and died in winter now but how I smelled like summer, I wondered. It seasons change I wonder if the seasons changed in perjury, like it did in Cleveland. It seemed like the possibility, because there wasn't perjury, but we couldn't have your real life, or was it your own personal perjury, like Groundhog Day for eternity? Mine would be a slushy overcast day in March, where everybody I knew in Florida, on the beach, and I stuck shoveling snow on my driveway with my power. I banished to the horrifying thought, worried if... I lingered too long there. I would manifest it for my future afterlife. Why would the department rule my murder as suicide? I'm a detective, for God's sake. I worked with those guys. They should have thoroughly investigated my death. They should have known it weren't suicidal. They were all at the funeral. Your funeral, I said. Didn't realise it immediately. It wasn't helpful. It was like offering a band-aid to an amputee. Totally irreverent at, the po- at that point. But Ryan rubbed his ma- mouth and looked curious. Yeah? How many people? Did they have a police pa- bagpipe band? I always wanted a band to send me off. The band was there and they played Amazing Grace on the pipes. Not a dry house in the place. house. I guess if I had a that's me, at least 500 people at the funeral. We've got a nice plot of Holy Land at Holy Cross Cemetery, by the way. Next to the fence, easy to find, but away from the traffic. One thing I was always aware of is the value of real estate. Its gravesite was premium because of its location and location. I should know. 
I've been there many times, stared at his headstone, searching for answers, peace, and an understanding that didn't exist. Till maybe now, murder was bad, but suicide was worse. Cool, my parents probably didn't pay too much for it. But it's good to know it's important to some people. You're important to me. What? As that wasn't a vow of love or anything. It was just a touching truth. It would be, it would must, could be my chance to say those kind of words to Ryan before he vaporized in front of me or something. Ah, sweet babe. You know, you're important to me too. You've been a friend a long time and you'll do anything for you. I oh, know, you do the same for me. That's why you have to help me now. He reached out his hand, out his hands rubbed my arms. I didn't feel anything. They were touching me, but there was no sensation over. Only I could see him doing it. Freaky Friday. That's very strange. Like the time I did acid in college and thought my roommate was a rabbit dog. We're in a figure so good. That's very strange. Like the time I did acid in the college and thought, thought my roommate was a rabbit dog wearing a figure skating costume. You dropped acid? Ryan, Ryan started. You must have been hilarious going wild like that telling a nun to go party. Telling a nun to go party. Well, just because I'm neat and tidy and prefer to spend my weekends relaxing with a good mind improving I'll kind of stretch you here. Yeah. But suddenly I was a nun. You are there are sides to me you haven't seen you haven't said to me, you haven't seen, never seen. I reached for an electronic cigarette with a new, I was seriously bad habit when you were wound as tight as I am on a regular basis and seen never, and never anything is to distress stress. I took a general pleasure in being, t- taking a deep drag and blowing the scentless vapour cloud in Ryan's direction. This felt so normal, like normal, like old times. He hated my habit, and before he quit, he, I quit regular cigarettes, he'd been known to flush them down the toilet, break them in half, and run over whole packs of his unmarked co- police cop car. He'd weaned himself on the vape two I uh, weaned myself under the vape two years ago, and now quit forever, together the whole year before. Ryan's death had been a shock, and now he's reaching out for my dick, now that, that he, that me reaching for my dick to comfort. Some people want the comfort of cheese, cake. I wanted to suck down on some cotton candy vapour. I thought you quit. He capped that statement off with a fake hacking cough. <laughs> as you, mu- as you have any secrets, please, I've seen everything you got. You never... See me, mate. Oh, if you have any secrets, please. I've seen everything you got. You ever seen me naked? I didn't imagine he meant that. I he meant I didn't do, couldn't do anything that would be surprising. That he knew me so too well. That I was safe and predictable and boring. My secretary, really having left my first grad department, was as an evidence tech. I hated blood, so it was a blousy fit. I'm an alcoholic with perky smile, neat. Napkin habits and zero social life. My serious, my social life, for lack, it therefore, was his fault for making me love, fall in love with him and ruin me with all other men. I used to take, used to be able to fake it. I could go months and months without thinking about how much I'd rather be Ryan. I could date and never worry about the part of me, the part of me I knew I had strong feelings for Ryan. I did, I, I did for my latest boyfriend. This was while I was younger and being propelled along by excitement of sexual discovery. Now I was 28, pretty sure I tried everything there was to do without getting too kinky, and no one able to fight my feelings for Ryan. So I told him, and he killed himself. Or not, said a ghost standing in front of me. So you got sent back to solve your murderer. I hope you feel can, but my mind is concerned with things like square footage. Not homicide. Remember how lousy an evidence tech I was? It had, it had actually hurt our friendship when I quit. Ryan had endorsed me with the department as a hard worker, but some of the crime scenes, actually all of them, had been not been my cup of tea. Plus I sat up wearing sensible shoes.
Did they give you any instructions or anything in poetry? I asked. How long have you been? How long were you here for? I looked, took another hit of my electronic cigar, cigarette. I was feeling a little bit better, having getting the hang of this communication with dead thing. Ryan was like, he'd always been nothing like it was creepy, or gross, or disturbing. Okay, it was a little disturbing. This was like cheating. That's this was allowing me a chance that. The, the time to say all the things I spent six months wishing I could tell Ryan. They don't tell me shit up there. I found out I was killed and asked them for details. They said they didn't know, suspicious regarding my death. How is that possible? Like, if you don't know, who the hell does? So basically, I got pissed and told me, told them to send me back and figure it out on my own. They gave me permission if I agreed to follow some lame rules. Number one, as it can only be visible to one person, so I picked you. The warm, fuzzy feeling stole over me. You picked me. That's so sweet. You know the erotic vape. I'm the erotic vape. I'm not even remotely wild. He looked at the little barrel and spent a hint of colour in his cheeks. Hey, we all got have our flaws, and truthfully, I like you just the way you are. I guess opposites attract even my friends. I know you, I, I could trust you not to freak out on me. No freaking hit. I was on it. I felt better for the past next time since I've gotten the dead scene news six months earlier. Calling. Ryan hadn't killed himself. He had been horrified by my ex declaration love or or if he was, he didn't remember it. It still worked for me. And out of the, all the people in the whole world, world, 500 mourners, you know, he picked me to appear to him. I figured you'd make a little less and organise the hell out of my investigation. Down straight, I can muscle in anything into a do-it list. OK, we'll figure this out. Not a problem. Let me get dressed and real quick and give me a plan of attack. Tell me how to start. I dump my coffee in the sink, wipe the sun in the steel with a sponge, thoroughly rinse the mug and deposited it in a dishwater washer. I wiped the mouthpiece with my cigarette, plunged it back into the wall charger. I never took it any, anywhere with me because it was far too tempting to hold it between my fingers. All day cigarillo style, I was looking like looking sultry like Ray to Hayworth. When I looked like a bit guilty overusing, which I did. You don't have to look at the police report of my death. Who was the investigating officer? I had a very memory of a rather smarmy, dark haired guy from, with a tiny name who had been in the department when I worked there. I paddled to the back stairs of my narrow Victorian house to the second floor. I'm not sure I'll be, I'll be back. I just need two. I'm not sure. I'll be back. I'll just need two seconds to be to change. But when I walked to my bedroom, decorated in a mixture of vintage and industrial pieces, and heavy in the floral fabrics, Ryan was thrown round on my bed on his side, head popped up in by his head. Hey, look! What can I? What I can do? He said, clearly pleased with himself. I stopped in my tracks, grabbed my chest, scared witless. Holy crap! Please don't do that again. I'm still alive, and I, you know, I would like to stay that way. My heart can only take so much. Oh, come on. I have to do to have some kind of fun. Being dead is very boring. You start sitting in a lab waiting for a blood test, flipping flower, through a gardening magazine with old people, making flame noises in the back of their throats all around you. Now that there's a disgusting visual. Thank you for that. I headed into my back into my wall and walking closet. Why don't you just pop back out into the hall so I can get dressed? He said he appeared in the closet and fought behind me. Jeez, quit it! I dropped the hem of my t-shirt, which I was been hiking past my hips, and scrambled away from the hem, tipping it, up, tripping on the corner of a suitcase. 
I would like a f- little privacy, please. Just get dressed. Who cares? I don't want to hear about the detective on my case because I can, I can get called back to hell. I mean perjury. I was not wearing a bra. I cared. Close your eyes. Give me a break. He then shut them and leaned against the row of empty window, wooden hangers just there, one, which were waiting for my dry clean to be picked up and assimilated back into the closet. Oh, it's a very organised closet. A very organised closet. Makes me ple- take, gives me pleasure to see all the boxes, the shoes, the photos of each pair attached to the front, lined up by colour sweaters sit in soft cases. Back handbags on hooks and belts, creating a colourful rectangle in the corner, neat and tidy. But it's weird, it was lean and nothing was moving. Hey, how come you can lean on things but you can't touch me or pick up a mug? Oh, I've no idea, like I said. They don't tell me anything. I've spent the whole time since just... I died trying to get some information and all I get is so cryptic no answers. I'm a cop, I know BS when I hear it. These guys have been handling it loud. They have, they have, to, they have to know what happened to me. Maybe they, you know, but you want, they want you to figure, they figure it out. Maybe it's a test or something. I took off my t-shirt and put on my bra in less than two seconds flat. I immediately felt better once the girl was so secure, left loose in Ryan's presence. Who knew what they might do? Maybe they, that's why you're in poetry instead of heaven. Or well, you're supposed to go to the light, but you didn't. There's no light any, anywhere. Trust me, babe, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm in a holding pattern. So maybe you're right. Maybe once I question, I solved a question of my death, I can move on. The thought made, made me a little sad. Of course, I didn't like what hang, by hanging out of eternity, uh, in eternity version of a, wait, wait, of a waiting room. Uh, on one hand, I was getting extra time with him. I reached for a sleeveless floral print shirt hanging the top business casual section of the closet. You really have lost too much weight. What? I spun around and found Ryan covering me, clearing me quickly. So much of his, so much for his closed eyes, the aqua and the yellow shirt was in my hand, not on my body, which meant I was in, in my panties and bra. And he was staring at me. Done. You look too skinny. Men like women with something they can grab onto. Nice to know even in death he found me unattractive. I rolled my eyes at the hangers. Thank you. I remember that next time looking for a man to grab me. Hey, I just a thought. I wonder if I could get a hold of. Good grief. You couldn't even keep that. You can't. Could you keep that thought to yourself? No, oh, I'm serious. Ryan sounded agitated, agitated, but I refused to look at him. Man, I don't know which would be worse. Never getting up again or getting up and not being able to do anything about it. If he was wading in the water, so could he very easily drown him. I'm sure there's a whole, there's a whole ghost of tomb perjury you can investigate with this issue with. I can't wait that long, it's scary. Quick, just turn around and take off your bra, turn your bra off. I see what happens. I have, I have to know. Nothing would get me into my shirt. Nothing could get me into my shirt. The wild leg treads faster than that. It will not go into be roused by me. We're friends, but it's not the same. Unfortunately, so forget it. I'm not taking my bath in front of you. Pop into Crazy Hall Saloon tonight and get the answers to all your sets of questions. That's, that's about 16... That's what 16-year-old boys do. I smoothed, smoothed my shirt in place, looked, quest, finished battering up my white pants, and turned to face him. Look, I'll help you do whatever it takes to find your killer, but I draw a line somewhere. I can take my pants off if, he, if you ask me to. He was tempting, but I controlled myself. I bit, I, I, he bit at his finger now, a clear sign he was stressed. I sighed. The hard on mystery was not going to be solved by me. I would apply myself to the murder question. The detective you called, who called me, had an Italian name. He was, 
kind of who I know totally know Ollie almost he, he took a little too much plea I'm telling you telling me that you and I quote blowing your brains out reflected distracted by him from his potential penis problem D'Angelo that sounds like him he's thorough a good detective but borderline weird sometimes I wonder if he can, if he can solve so many crimes because his mind is just a bit too close to criminals like Dexter's complex. No one would ever accuse me of that. I hated that there was blood splattered at scenes that I was fingerprinting, but D'Angelo, he was, it was it possible he was into it? I think it would be an acute description of the guy I talked to on the phone. He approached me at your wake and gave me more details than I wanted to hear. I was pretty sure the conversation was ruining my appetite permanently. And when I was on the verge of vomiting, he asked me out. You, he asked you out, am I awake? Ryan well, looked horrified, which was a good purpose of how I felt. Yes, he did. Motherfucker. He, to he, to he, to he stood straight, his hands curling to his fist. Who does that? I always thought he was a little off that, that pot. You going along? Yeah, I'm not even in the ground. Is <coughs> coaching on me like that? <coughs> what's mine? Hold it. <coughs> Do not pass go. Stop right there. Wait <coughs> a minute. <coughs> Something about that statement is so right. It's so wrong. It's like winning lottery, but doled out at a dollar a day. What do you mean yours? I'm not your wife, not your girlfriend, not even your ex. I'm your friend. I admitted this time was tacky and inappropriate. There's no reason why this name, that this name, could not ask me out. No reason I couldn't say yes and no if I happened to, which only happened would have happened if I happened if I'd taken a blow to the head and suddenly those short, smarmy, arrogant men attractive. But the point was, the choice was mine. Don't get your panties in a bunch. I've just saying, I wait. I wanted for the rest of the waited for the rest of the sentence. But none seemed to be forthcoming. So, what do you want me to do, Ryan? Find the police report? Anything? Okay, anything. Try to remember what the ranger told you. Call Mariner. He should be able to like, get you an answer and get your report and answer your questions. You might have. Mariner is his ex partner and good friend. His first name was Jake, though everyone, but God, his mother, seemed to have forgotten that. God, I could, God, got it, I can do that. Ryan patted the jacket of his jeans. Damn it, I have to go, they're calling me. Have you a cell friend? Oh, cell phone, I asked in horror. It was a vision of the hell, a phone, ringing all hours in my afterlife, non stopping over the cafes. It's on vibrate. I pulled out and glanced at it. Text message, what? They're saying I can't fill out my, didn't, didn't fill out my request form for re entry paperwork correctly. I need to refile it. This red tape is killing me. Grin split his face. Killing me. Get it? I'm glad to see you just take you get taking this dying thing so well. And you you haven't lost your sense of humour. Got a row with the punches, babe. I'm not they're not so bad, just so different. I'll be back as soon as I can. Suddenly fear gripped me. Wait, boy, don't go. But you flicked me in the wave. Love you more than beer, basically. See ya. And he was gone. But not like a puff of smoke or sugar to dissolving his iced tea. But there, one minute and gone the next. I needed another cup of coffee. Chapter 2 I am Bailey Burke. A real estate agent, Alison Lauren sent me. Christy J J Jenkins said the woman who had life, her life I wanted in the mid thirties. She's gorgeous, firm body, everything so furky. Chapter Three. Chapter Three. Makeup on point, eyebrows pure perfection. She had a hottie fancy and her husband, two mints of worth, worthy offspring. A nine-year-old Tudor mini mansion reviews to the lake that she was selling because it's too small. Five thousand square feet didn't really cut it for me neither, but I was willing to suffer for it with it. 
This is the only downsizing in my job. Raging real estate jealousy. Yet on the flip side, I, I, I got to peek into tons of houses I've never seen otherwise. And one of my many things I loved about Cleveland was the architecture. The Jensen's neighborhood of Hepburn, Bedford, Tudors built like Lakeside in the 1920s, and the details of these houses were always amazing. There's my husband, Tim, she said as I followed her into the foyer. Tim gave me a wave and a smile for retreating to the back of the house, his phone in his hand. You have a lovely home, I said. Not changing having high-end clients was to tend to push back when I suggested changes, yet, if anything, they needed staging more than a smarter home client because their buyer pool was both small and frequently. Anything had to be perfect for every sing, every single showing. Thank you. How should how should we do this? Let's let's have you go through the house with me. I'll make suggestions based on my unique impressions, and I'll send you some detailed lists of three D images, rooms, and my changes in it. Have it hand to take to take pictures of measurements. I brace myself to find the correct wording, not to offend or make a way think the opposite. The services aren't, weren't even necessary. But I have to admit, I wasn't as inclined as usual to feel green, even if I walked into the McClubbery panelled library. <coughs> I feel there enough books to keep me busy for the next 3,000 weekends. I was just attracted with the thoughts of Ryan, wondering if I had lost what, what was all a fragment of my imagination. Hoping it wasn't the same, this ghost was real. As, such, as much as ghosts can be, wishing he could come back, thinking there's no way in hell to little old Bailey Burke could solve a murderer. I couldn't even solve the mystery of where my pay, newspaper went every morning. Sometimes between two, three, between five a.m. my opening uh, and opening my front door at six a.m. is habitually dis, habitually disappeared. I had no suspects, though I have an eye on my old guy across the street. Because I've seen him reading the newspaper. Most likely we were the t- only two people in the West Side still doing that. Then there's, th- th- but this is murder. But what do I know about murder? The closest I've got well, came was a rage that blanketed me. Was a na- was a neighbour's rock while I left brown bombs the size of a small child in my tiny front yard. Normally I lived a very conflict free life. I squirmed when people... Say pretty mean things to each other, and I retreated into the world of pretty things. Design, ultimately, debacle as a stint of a, as an evidence tech. As we investigated the living room and lit for our dining room, I made notes for Christie, but told Christie, So far, only clutter I've seen is your husband's office. It's littered with papers and laundry, and sometimes that may or not have been that short human skull. There's also a glass gun cabinet filled with a dozen rifles and walls filled with taxidermy and uh, out of the walls. Uh, Stay out of my office, Tim called, called his head, popping into the floor, always staring at me. He had a booming insurance salesman's voice at complete odds of his lean build. I look at Christie for a cue to hold on how to handle the statement. Don't be stubborn. She told him, "You need. You said we need to sell the house, Timmy. It was your idea. Did you see the news listing I sent you? It was fifty grand overpriced." Tim said, "And you did. Did you see the roof? What the roof? What the hell is that? <coughs> it's on the spark, Chrissy protested. <coughs> it's original. The owners have checked it and repaired it every year. It <coughs> cost more than fifty thousand <coughs> Dollars each to have a roof like that put on today, it would and it's great real estate sale value. It looks old, he said in disdain. Oh, because it was. There seems to be a pure original with most people. I'm happy to leave your office alone if you, if that's what you prefer. I told him, but I suggest you lock up your personal papers and my, any electronics you know, that are easily removable, like your tablet and laptop. You might want to lose the skull. Everything deceased turned 
to turn off potential buyers. Sell them golden rule of thumb, and you make sure the gun company is locked. Gave me a lot, but he, may, he seemed more interested in the house his wife wanted to buy. He was determined to hate. Tim shut his phone at Christie. Did you see that? That that makes me need repair. My thoughts started to wonder as they discussed their housing furniture. I didn't care about the interview of 90-year-old Rick at the moment. I cared about Rick Ryan, who would never see 40, let alone 90 years on earth. Okay, sweetheart, she said, her voice mild and unconcerned. We can talk about that later. Bailey and I need to go through the house. I'm sure she's other appointments. They were dead. That's what I'm going to. That's what I had to go on. Do you believe in ghosts? I blurted to Christy after Tim made a face and disappeared again. I was clutching my iPad with white knuckles like it was the only thing anchoring into the floor. She was startled by my random question, turning her gaze upon the view of the lake through the six panel windows to me. Christy was about ten years old younger than her husband and about five years older than me. She had straight blonde hair, bouncy breasts and long tan legs that rose above her designer stilettos. Overall she gave impression of perfection, intelligent, sweet and absolutely capable of getting what she wanted. With the kind of body men would like to grab onto. I vowed to let eat whole chicken for lunch to gain some protein. She was also a woman who was bound to think I was so so viable for asking uh, something like that. It seemed like likely her husband, my hobby was golf for planets or golf. Why in taste, not golf hunt, gugs hunting. I was going to lose this job and future commissions for my friend who might recommend him to me because I was fascinated of mine. Yet I couldn't stop myself. But she nodded, apparently undeterred. Of course I believe in ghosts. Why do you ask? She said in a much natural, in a, such a normal conservation, conservation of voice. I heard myself felt felt very shocked. Well, my close friend visited me today. I said, leaning a little closer to her, eager for comfort. I'm not sure how about how I feel about it. Okay, I met. I wasn't highly professional me, but damn it, I had to tell someone. Is even me. He was either that sling my back in a pitcher of margarita, margaritas, and I've never been so much of a drinker. I tend to wind up sobbing like, and well, this is the sad archer that we play. When I take to have too many, Frank doesn't does it for me every time. Ryan has always thought it's funny. He told me I was the only person who would find a song with the word tramp, and it's sentimental. My eyes started to fill with tears. Ryan was dead, still dead. Christy patted my arm, mouth, running in sympathy. Oh, well, that's sad, but it's wonderful at the same time, isn't it? Exactly, I said in face, actually. Christy understood. Want to see me, but at the same time, you want to know what she's found peace in the afterlife. And seeing her reminds you that it really is dead, and you don't have ever be true part of your life again. That's so true, Christy was... Glorifying Christmas, only she, she is a he. Oh, she squeezed my hand in sympathy, a cleaver, a cleaver is jiffy puffy, popping over a sleeveless summer red sweater. What kind of friend, just, that kind of friend, just enjoy it, babe. Think of it as an extra time with him. Not if he gets that chance. And remember, you, you always keep him in your heart, like bleed back, bleed back tears. You're right, you're exactly right. Thanks so much, Christy, for telling me exactly what I wanted to hear. What was his name? Did he die, did he die violently? I may, I may, he may not help finding help finding his, his way to light. Now she seemed really interested. A spark of morbid curiosity in her eyes, mingling with sympathy. His name's Ryan. He claims there's no light in sight. And then and then he's a cop with detective, actually. He tends to think he, he knows everything. Did he die, Jimmy? I had shook my head, not not went to explain further. He was shot. Her eyes grew wide, so I could see the rims of her green contact lenses floating over her pupils. I remember that from the news. He killed himself, didn't he? Again, I couldn't 
the moon and shake my head, shrug and give a half nod. Well then, no wonder he couldn't cross over. He's tormented over taking his own life. You need to reassure him. We re- realize, release him from his guilt. She looked so, so earnest as worried, so solemn. I felt this needed to show her, not Ryan. Okay, Christy, I'll, I'll try, thanks. As we moved into the spacious kitchen, Tim was eating a sandwich, standing at the sink. Is she telling you that we need to scale back on your wine, on our, your wine collection? Because she should. At least I was right about the wine tasting hobby. Chrissy was a woman of layers, clearly. No, sweetheart, we're talking about ghosts. Chris, Chris shot him like a dimpled smell. The tragedy of violence tortured soul, quickly forgotten. She flirted with her husband, wrapping her arms around his neck. He rolled his eyes, turned his head to finish chewing, but, he went, but then he smiled indignantly at her. He just, he didn't, he wasn't just jealous of the words. I was just as that, a man looking when we love and affection. I need to get out there more, more clearly. I tried to suddenly blow my nose and stuff the body tissue back in my purse. Used tissues should, be, should just evaporate. The minute you crumble into a little ball and disintegrate, should spontaneously should occur. So you don't find anything with a handbag full of hard tissue blocks with lint dirt and gum wrappers clinging to them. Too many tears from me today made me stuffy. Nobody wants to hear your theories about ghosts, babe. Nobody wants to hear your theories about ghosts, babe. Tim gave Christie's butt a quick pat before he set her aside. And please don't tell me this house is haunted, because you know I think that's crap. Oh, but it is, she said, her eyes wide and innocent. She looked like an angel with double D's. Most men's idea of heaven, Ryan's included. I can feel it, she added. That's why I'm feeling... I'm finally agreeing that we need to sell this house so much. I like, I like so much. Oh, that was the real story. Christy didn't want to move. Tim did. He snorted and polished off the last bite of his sandwich. The house isn't haunted. Don't tell people that. We're not, we're, we are moving, Chrissy. End of story. I need more space. Chrissy is so surveyed away from, from him on her heels. I, I quickly hear the stripper music booming from every dink dink of her curvy hips. Her husband's eyes followed her movements. She, she grinned at me from where we, we were down the hallway and walked into the first guest suite. We're not moving. Trust me. I adore this house. I has soul. I am, have to let Tim think he's an idea to stay. Men are a pain that way. I might your confidence, I said truthfully. I can't get him to do anything I do anything I want. Just play uh, play up your assets, he assured me. When I figured out what they were, I could jump I'd jump on it. I think you've more natural assets than I do. I just it to to my I think you have more natural assets than I do, I just it to my chest. Naturally, hardly. I, I didn't buy it, the only pair. She grinned. Just remember the three H's, heels and jobs, heart. Bear the first, offer the second, and the third is yours. Interested in my philosophy. I don't want to afraid you with one, but I wasn't touching the second, literally. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. The whole bodiless entity thing wouldn't allow it. I'll keep that in mind. Now, look in your coat closet and see if you can reduce the number of out season coats that are stopping in here. But I just started to see the furs, bomber jackets, dress coats and puffers. Well, obviously it was mother, Ryan's mother, dressed all in black, bundled up like in, up in a long winter coat, weeping on her husband's shoulder at Ryan's funeral. She had asked me why he could he would commit suicide. I said I wish I could, it, we could ask him. They always say that he could, someone's mother but the, the talk, killer won't talk and the victim can't. But in this case, the dead man was speaking. I needed answers. I was going to find, to find them, find, I wasn't going to find a stage, stage in a stately home. Time to get back, get my emergency drill on. The police station is not my favourite place on earth. I mean, there would be, there would be outhouse and my cousin's 
so her farm, but it's down close. The building downtown needed an extra home makeover or a bulldozer moving it down. Everything is dingy grey, a bit rancid like a stick just a sticky sort of sort like the bottom of my shoes after going down going to the country fair. End of chapter two for the moment. Chapter two we will continue on the next reading. Thank you from Mark of Holes of the Mount Podcast Show. Bye bye.